Hello, beautiful souls. It's Kat from Elevate, my channel where we talk about recovering from toxic relationships and regaining self-love and self-esteem. Today's topic is going to be why do toxic people hurt other people? Um, it's something I was writing in my journal, actually, when I was journaling. You know, I was writing about the questions in my mind. And in writing this question and trying to answer this question myself, you know, I wound up writing, all I know is I need to prioritize loving myself. I'm able to step back from uneasy or unstable situations. If someone's hurting me or being toxic, it's my responsibility to exit. If someone's disrespectful or abusive, it's time for me to exit. I need to learn to heal my heart better. I need to learn to let go better. I think in thinking about this more deeply, there are a lot of reasons why toxic people hurt other people. I mean, the number one thing is that it's got to do with them and not with the other people. Of course, they're going to try to blame the other person because that's what toxic people do. But... I'm just sharing part of my journaling and my insight into myself to essentially let you know that you're not alone. I don't think toxic people discriminate and they, they, they certainly pick any kind of person to hurt and abuse. It, you know, if you're codependent, you wind up dealing with it, you wind up accepting it, you wind up making excuses for it maybe. Whereas if you weren't codependent or you weren't maybe brought up in a way to accept abuse, then you would walk away immediately. So I think people that are codependent and I think people that have, have grown up in dysfunctional households are more accustomed to accept the abuse and to be abused more often because we, we have this um, setting in our mind that like normalizes abusive behavior. We often abuse love, uh, excuse me, often confuse abuse and love. So you might've had inconsistencies in your childhood that made you confuse love and abuse, or you had a parent that was loving and abusive on and off. So it feels like certain people are more apt to be hurt by toxic people, whereas people that may have grown up in a more healthy, emotionally healthy household or, you know, childhood, etc., those people will be less hurt. So there's, there's like this perception of um, that toxic people only target certain types of people like codependent people, but that's not really the case. They'll abuse anyone. They'll hurt anyone. You know, they're just out there in the world throwing their trauma and abuse on everybody and not discriminating. Like I said, they'll throw it on anybody. It's the people that have the skills and the, the healthy uh, reactions to the abuse that escape unscathed. So those are the people that have grown up in, in a healthier environment and don't have the, um, let's say, d does, don't make excuses for the abuse. They don't accept the abuse. They immediately exit the situation. And I think that all of us can learn from that concept, you know, that we need to exit the situation when abuse is present. When we logically know that abuse is present on an emotional level, we still don't want to let go. And it's so hard because there's this disconnect between our mind knowing that a person is abusive and not good for us and not healthy to be in our lives. And then there's this other piece that's our heart that says, oh, but I, I miss that person or I want that person around. I think it takes a lot of deep, a lot of deep, um, analyzation, I guess, on your own feelings on why you want that person in your life. Because there's got to be something going on 
it's deeper than that person. You know, I, I think it's got to do with codependent tendencies. It's got to do with a lot of things. And it's not really about that person per se, because you could slot out that person and probably put someone else in and you'd still feel the same way, especially if you've had this pattern happen to you. Like I was just speaking to a woman and she said she doesn't know why she keeps going through the same pattern over and over again. And it's really because of codependency. It's because she grew up that way and she's now become an enabler, a caretaker, someone who tries to fix things and she can't let that identity go. So I think part of it is letting go of the identity and the behavioral practices of codependency. So it's little by little having the boundaries which negate the codependency and stopping the behaviors, but also then moving out of the identity maybe of codependency. So moving out of the identity of the fixer and the person who makes everything better and the person who tries to be everybody's friend. So, you know, that's been a, a piece where I've fall, fallen into the trap of codependency where I get along with 99.9% .9 of people and for the, you know, point, uh, 0.01% of people that I don't get along with, so I guess we could say it's 99.9% .9 of people. And then the 0.01% of people I don't get along with, and maybe due to them being toxic, I've tried to make peace with those people. I've tried to fix things with those people. And that's my bad. That's my codependency, right? Like I can see that from a logical level. Does it stop me from falling off the wagon sometimes? No, because to me, like codependency is so ingrained from when you're a child, it's very hard to, you know, uh, not be codependent when you've been raised as a codependent. It's it's a constant battle. And every once in a while, I do fall off the wagon. For the most part, I've really made strides and huge changes in my life. And I'm not uh, as much codependent as I used to be. But I think there's a piece of me that still identifies with that fixer, with every, you know, being everybody's friend and getting along with everybody and um, kind of helping the underdog, you know, in a way I think codependent people identify with helping the underdog. They want to help heal, help fix someone who's got problems. So that person could be, the toxic person could be someone who's got mental problems. It could be someone with alcohol, an alcoholic, drug addict, um, someone just down on their luck financially. Maybe that's the person or someone who seems to be, you know, lost their home or lost their job, you know, um, as a codependent, we tend to want to save the day and rescue people. We, we feel, we feel a lot for these people and want to, I guess, feel useful. And it's that identity thing again, you know, you have to learn how to stop identifying with that uh, personality, that role, I would say. So that role of fixer, rescuer, helper, it sounds good. But when it's, when that kindness and love and caring and help is given to the wrong person, it's not good because it winds up biting you on the ass. And, you know, I've learned the hard way that that's the case, especially with these toxic people who can't appreciate you. They can't even see you. I think they don't even see the value of you and, and all that you are. And it's, it's not like you're even doing it for that validation necessarily. Although some people with codependency, I think are, but I think even if you're doing it just because you want to be a good person or you want to give, when you give to the wrong person, it bites you in, on the ass. And unfortunately, I think we've all 
been in the situation, if we've been involved with a toxic person, that sometimes the more we try to care about them, the more they dislike us. And that's all in their head. That's all from their issues. It's all in their mind. And there's nothing we can do about it. How frustrating is that too, that we have no control over things, right? So we can't control what they think. We can't control what they they how they perceive us. And often in this situation, especially, they don't they do not perceive you in a real way. So what's actually happening, they don't see that. You know, they see their own distorted perception of things. And again, you could be you could have the best intentions. And this person is not going to see that. They're just going to kind of manipulate things in their own mind. They have a warped, distorted perception of you. They may may, um, have their own ideas on what's motivating you. And they have just like pinned that on you and that's it. Like they don't actually want to know what your real motivations are in their mind, it's something else that's not good. And that's it. You know, there's no like question. There's no um, kind of reciprocal scenario. And that's another piece. Like if you notice in these situations, when toxic people are hurting you, you're not, you're giving and giving all this love and all this care. And these people are not giving it back. There's no reciprocation. This is not a reciprocal scenario. This is not not a mutual um, scenario. You're not both giving to each other like it should be. It's like you're giving and giving and they're taking and taking. Basically, you know, toxic people are takers. Whether they're not going to admit it, they're not going to actually um, ever face that because then they'd be you know, having to face shame, which they won't do. But um, there's no reciprocity. So you're basically giving and giving, and they're hurting you back. And I think I ask myself, why? Why am I giving to this person even anything? And why do I care about this person And it's my own codependency that this idea of wanting to help someone that I truly care about. And it's not like um, the other thing is I I think they sometimes think you look down upon them and that becomes an issue. Then they dislike you for that. However, you may not look down upon them at all. I know I'm pretty sure in one situation that I had, that was the scenario and that's why the person didn't, I think, I guess, appreciate what I was doing because they thought I was looking down on them. But this is all made up. And these are these, again, warped kind of perceptions of a person who doesn't see you, doesn't actually see reality, doesn't want to see reality. So they decide what they're going to decide. They don't ask any questions. They don't communicate. And, you know, they, they act out their own toxic patterns. So you're going to find that if this person was a narcissist, they will act out a pattern that narcissists will act out. If this person was a borderline, they act out a different pattern, but similar in some ways. If this person is an alcoholic, they're going to act out you know, an alcoholic type of pattern. And you're going to see the same thing happen over and over again with anyone who dares to care about them or enable or quote unquote help in any way, or it's just in their vicinity. So it, it, it's, it's like, um, their pattern will be, will be acted out over and over again, whether it's you it's the next person, it's a friend, it's someone else, they're going to pull the same thing because that's what that's just what toxic people do. They're going to act that way with everyone um, to varying degrees. It's not going to be the same way, but it's going to be a toxic pattern that they repeat until they figure out their toxic issues and you know, start to heal and change for the better. 
if they ever do that, which I think most of these toxic people don't do that. They don't even have the the awareness that anything is um, truly their fault. A lot of them, I think. So there's no reason for them to try to change because they think everything's your fault or someone else's fault. It's their family's fault. It's their friend's fault. It's their boyfriend's fault. It's their girlfriend's fault. It's never their fault. So I would say, why do toxic people hurt other people? It's because that's just what they do. That's their pattern. You know, they were they were raised in a certain way somewhere along the line that they they started to justify the way that they treat people and whether that's due to behavioral uh, things that they learned or it could be biological like mental illness where they need medication or something to be able to see reality more clearly in either way they're toxic right because they're 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 doing toxic things and throwing their trauma all over people without realizing it. So it's not you. It's it's like they would be like this with anybody, somebody who's healthy, somebody who's not healthy. The only difference is people that are healthy will get out of these situations quickly before they become emotionally bonded. And that's what you want to strive for, you know, going forward, you want to work on your codependency or your your capacity to accept abuse and learn not to accept what you've been accepting to you need to lay out some boundaries and you need to get to the place where the next time around that you're involved with someone who's toxic you get out sooner rather than later you recognize you can't save them you can't change them this is who they are and it's not you and it's not your job to change them and it's not your job to help them even though you may identify as that role of the fixer or the rescuer you have to work on that piece so you don't fall into that every time you find someone that you want to save or rescue that you care about so much that you want to save or rescue even if it's with the best intentions, you still can't fall into that because it's codependency. So I hope this helped today. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will. Also, please send this video to any friends that you think might be interested in hearing about this. I know a lot of people have dated toxic people or also have had toxic breakups. I have so many playlists and videos about these topics. And if you see something that might be interesting to someone you know, I'd love it if you share with them so I can get my message out to more people.